yellow is all around us. We see it every day. But have you ever wondered, is the color that you're seeing the same as the actual color of the object? Let's discuss it. We can see things around us because of the light that is reflected off these things into our eyes. This light behaves as both a wave and a particle because it's a quantum mechanical object. And this is important because the quantum mechanics plays a crucial role in the colors that we see. Now, when we see light, we effectively measure two quantities, the amount of light or intensity, where a single quanta of light is called a photon, and the energy of that light, which is its color and is related to the wavelength of the light, such that the energy of a photon E equals Planck's constant H times the speed of light C divided by wavelength lambda, and it is much easier to discuss light in terms of wavelength rather than energy. Light is also referred to as electromagnetic radiation, and this radiation is a really broad spectrum that far exceeds the light that we can see. This electromagnetic spectrum is a continuum of wavelengths varying from high energy gamma radiation, which has a wavelength that is smaller than the radius of an atom, to low energy radio waves that can have wavelengths that exceed the size of planets. Visible light is a small slither of wavelengths that the human eye can detect and differentiate. This light has a wavelength of around the size of a bacteria, and this goes from a wavelength of 700 nanometers, which is red, all the way down to 350 nanometers, which is violet. So our eyes are sensitive to both the intensity and wavelength of the light that enters them, which translates to brightness and color in our brain. Our eyes look something like this. When light enters the eye, it is refracted and focused to form an image on the back of the eye called the retina. This light is absorbed by photosensitive cells called rods and cones. When enough light has been absorbed by one of these cells, an electrochemical pulse is sent, telling our brain that the cell has detected something. The amount of light required for this is called the activation energy. Rods have a much lower activation energy than cones and are much more numerous, but do not contribute to our color perception. This is why in low light conditions, we can still see things because our rods are still picking up light, but we struggle to make out color. And this is because our cones are not triggering. Each of these cells also has a wavelength dependence on their sensitivity. The more the cell is sensitive to a wavelength, the larger the retina response when that light is detected. This is how we can define the three types of cones, red, blue, and green. The difference in these sensitivities, which indicates the number of pulses for a given wavelength, is how we determine the color of something. It is also how we can trick our brains into thinking we see a color, where it is actually just a combination of other colors. For example, in most of our screens, we only have red, green, and blue pixels. The emission from these pixels combines to make all different types of colors. For example, yellow. There's no yellow wavelength being emitted, just a combination of red and green. But to our eyes, this is exactly the same thing. It's a common belief that an object has a given color because when we shine light onto it, only that color is reflected. So in the case of a red apple, we shine light onto it and we see red because only red is reflected. But this is far from the truth of the matter. To look at the true color of an object, we take absorption measurements. By measuring the light that an object absorbs, we can get an idea of the physics behind what's going on to give the object a color. And remember what we see is what is not absorbed. So the inverse of these measurements so let's look at a few everyday objects, starting with a tomato. This is the absorption spectrum of a tomato. When we compare this to the visible spectrum, we see that it's red because it mainly reflects red light while absorbing other colors. But when we look at a carrot, it absorbs a little bit more blue light and reflects a little bit more green light than tomatoes. But both carrots and tomatoes reflect the same amount of red and orange yet they appear to be completely different colors. Why is this? 
This is because of color theory, which gives us the color wheel. Colors that are opposite on the color wheel are called complementary. Carrots appear more orange, not because they reflect more orange light than a tomato, but because they absorb more blue light, which is the complementary color to orange. So while a carrot is yellow, orange, red, and even a little green, they look orange because they're not blue. We can also see this trend in other objects. Take this purple pigment. It mainly reflects blues and purples. It has a smidge of green and red, but it looks purple because it absorbs a lot of yellow light and yellow is complementary to purple. Okay, the color of an object can be quite complicated, but it basically boils down to two things. What is the colors that are reflected from the object? And what are the complementary colors that are absorbed? But why do these things have this spectrum in the first place? The answer lies in what the atoms of the material are doing. Before we talk about these complex objects to begin with, let's discuss the color of single atoms, because this helps us explain larger systems. Let's take the simplest atom, the hydrogen atom, which is just one electron orbiting the nucleus. Electrons of atoms can only exist in certain quantized energy levels or orbitals. This is because they're quantum particles and as such, the potential from the atom dictates the energies the electron can have, forcing it to exist in levels that correspond to integer wavelengths in the potential well or the attractive and repulsive force of the nucleus. When light comes in and interacts with the electron, if the energy of the light is the same as an accessible energy gap, then the electron can absorb this energy and move up toward an excited state. As there's only so many states, there is a limited number of wavelengths the electron can absorb. We can determine what wavelength an atom can absorb either by shining light through it as a gas and measuring the absorption, or we can heat the atoms up and once they get hot enough, they'll start to emit these same wavelengths when the electrons drop from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. In the visible spectrum, the hydrogen atom looks something like this, where the highlighted colors correspond to energies that can be absorbed, i.e. that this is measured through heating the atoms and seeing what wavelengths they emit. Other atoms will look different due to their different energy levels. For example, the helium atom, this principle of energy levels and absorption is exactly the same for molecules and solids, although obviously their spectra is very different. When we see colors, it isn't from single atoms. The absorption and reflection is just too small. What we see is a bulk response from molecules or solids as a whole. Just looking at molecules, we can already describe a large amount of the pigments that we use and see. The colors of these pigments work exactly the same way as atoms. Instead, this time, the electrons from multiple atoms band together to act as a single system that has its own energy levels. In the case of tomatoes, we have a molecule called lycopene. In carrots, we have beta-carotene. And in a really common purple pigment, we have malvine. All of these molecules have defined energy levels, which is due to their geometry. Whether it's the length of the carbon chain or the carbon rings themselves, the symmetry of the molecules defines the set of energy levels that the electrons can exist in. And then this therefore dictates what wavelengths these electrons can absorb and thus eventually the color that we see. So the next time you see a colorful fruit or something, Think about how the electrons of the molecules band together to absorb small sections of the visible spectrum. And the color theory and the way our brain interprets color leads us to think something is a single color, but there's always more going on.